Blessed morning, grade 7. Welcome to our sixth session. Our topic for this morning is about using phrases, clauses, and sentences appropriately and meaningfully. Let us first read our objectives. At the end of this module, you will be able to A. Distinguish phrases, clauses, and sentences. B. Use phrases, clauses, and sentences appropriately and meaningfully. And last, provide sample for phrases, clauses, and sentences. These three structures are common part of English and are all composed of groups of words. Clauses, phrases, and sentences are very similar, but they do have different rules. Learning the difference between them will help you make a lot more sense of English grammar and will be very useful to improve your written English. So before anything else, what is a phrase? Okay, a phrase is a group of related words that has either a subject or a predicate but never both. Another meaning is a phrase is a word can be grouped together but without a subject or a verb. This is called a phrase. Because a phrase has neither subject nor verb, it can't perform a predicate. This is a structure that must contain a, a verb and it tells you something about what the subject is doing. A phrases can be very short or quite long. The two examples of phrases are after dinner, waiting for the rain to stop. Phrases can be used alone, but you can use them as part of a sentence. They are used as parts of speech. So those are the meanings of a phrases. So let us go to clauses. So what is a clause? Clauses are groups of words that have both subject and predicates. Unlike phrases, a clause can sometimes act as a sentence. This type of clause is called an independent clause. This isn't always the case, and some clauses can't be used on their own. These are called subordinate clause and need to be used with an independent clause to complete their meaning. An example of a subordinate clause is when the man broke into the house. An example of an independent clause is the dog barked at him. While the independent clause could be, could be used by itself as a complete sentence, the subordinate clause could not. For it to be correct, it would need to be paired with another clause. When the man broke into the house, the dog barked at him. So that is a complete sentence with a subordinate and combination of subordinate and independent clauses to form a sentence. So there are two types of clauses. Number one, subordinate or dependent clause. So when we say subordinate or dependent clause, they cannot stand alone. When written as a sentence is a fragment begins with subordinating conjunction. Common subordinating conjunctions are after, as far as, as soon as, although, as if, as though, as, as long as, because, before, even though, if, in order, in order that, provided, since, so, so that, done, until, what, whatever, when, whenever, where, whereas, wherever, and while. Example, Tom, when I ate breakfast every morning, floor, what happens? So, in the sentence Tom uses, it is a subordinating conjunction that is, cannot stand alone because you cannot, you cannot guess what is, what happened next after he ate his breakfast. A subordinating conjunction in this sentence causes a sentence to become an incomplete thought because, as I've said earlier, Tom doesn't include what happened after he ate his breakfast. 
The second type of a dependent clause is an independent clause. So what is the first type of an of a clause? A. Very good. The dependent clause or subordinating clause. So a, an independent clause can stand alone unlike dependent clause. Express as complete thought. You can make an independent clause dependent by adding a subordinating conjunction. Example, in an independent clause, the earth is round. So it expresses a complete thought because an earth is really round. So when you are to add subordinating conjunction because, so it becomes because the earth is round. So it becomes a dependent clause because it doesn't answer or it is an answer of the reason the earth is round. So that ends about the types of clauses. So let us proceed to sentence. What is a sentence? A complete sentence as a subject and a predicate and can often be composed of more than one clause. As long as it has a subject and a predicate, a group of words can form a sentence no matter how short. So example, you ate fish. So what is the subject here is? The subject here is you. The action word is ate and the predicate is fish. So more complex sentences can combine multiple clauses or phrases to add additional information about what is described. Clauses may be combined using conjunctions such as and, but, and, or. Example, he went out to dinner but, that, but didn't enjoy the meal. This example is composed of two independent clauses. He went out to dinner and he didn't enjoy the meal. Combined with a conjunction, but. So we use a conjunction but to have a additional information. So let us proceed to the four ba basic types of sentences. The first is a declarative sentence. Interrogative, imperative, and exclamatory. So let us discuss each of these types of sentences as we go along to our discussion. So when we say declarative sentence, the main goal of this type of sentence is to make a statement. So, it, so in a nutshell, any sentence that tells us something can be attributed to this category. It doesn't matter what kind of information it delivers, whether it is proven fact or theoretical statement. The only thing that matters is if it declares something. If it does, it is a declarative sentence. The standard order of the words in such sentences is as follows. Subject plus verb plus object, where the subject is usually a noun or a pronoun or a person, thing, place, and etc. The verb is the action or state of being and the object is any word or multiple words that are influenced by the verb. So example, the girl lost her favorite doll. So here, the subject is the girl and the verb is lost and the object is favorite doll. So it combines the subject, the verb, and an object. That is a declarative sentence. So when we say an inter interrogative sentence, it, a declarative sentence aims to share information whereas an interrogative one strives to receive information. According to the interrogative sentence definition, any sentence that asks a question can be attributed to this category and will always end with a question mark. So unlike the other types of sentences, interrogative sentences have a different word order. WH word or how plus auxiliary verb plus subject. Example, where is the where is Kate? So in this example, where is the WH word? Is is the auxiliary verb and Kate is the subject. So let us proceed to imperative sentence. 
So what is an imperative sentence? The main goal of these sentences is to tell others to do something or in other words, give a command. Imperative sentences can end either a period or exclamation mark unlike the interrogative that ends with a question mark. So the word in the word order and form of such a sentence are different from other types. Often doesn't it often doesn't have a subject because an imperative sentence by default speaks to the recipient or reader if it is written text. Generally, such sentences consi consist of a base verb plus any additional details. These sentences can also be a negative and positive. Here are few imperative sentences examples to help you grasp the idea. So positive, attend history le lectures, join a football team, and a negative, do not attend the history lectures. Don't join a football team. As for possible applications of imperative sentences, they are mostly used in oral speech or if we are talking about writing, can be used in dialogues between characters or in the form of a call to action that encourages readers to do something. So let's proceed to exclamatory sentence. What is an exclamatory sentence? The last of the four sentence types is the exclamatory sentence. It is used to express a strong surprise of emotion and always ends with an exclamation mark. Here are a couple examples of how basic order of words in such sentences might look. So what plus adjective plus noun plus subject plus verb. How plus adjective, adjective or adverb plus subject plus verb. For example, what a wonderful weather, or how generous you are. So in this example, that an adjective is wonderful. Weather is the subject, and the second example, generous is the adjective, and you is the subject, and are is the verb. Unlike previous types, exclamatory sentences do not have a negative form. Look at this exclamatory sentence example to see how they are formed. What a beautiful painting. I feel terrible. What an excellent idea it was to throw him a surprise party. How nice it was. Exclamatory sentences express powerful emotion and respectively strive to evoke the same emotion in readers. In many cases, using this type of sentence in academic papers is inappropriate. However, if you are writing a descriptive or narrative essay, Exclamatory sentences are great tools for helping your story to become even more vivid by delivering the right emotion to the reader. Okay, that ends our discussion. I hope you learned something from today's lesson. If you have clarification or questions, you may contact me through my Facebook account, Joe Maricar B. Rubrico, or you may visit the new link for LCMS, http slash lcms.guidef.com Thank you for listening.